3.2 day one, we're looking at complex numbers. So we're looking at the imaginary unit i. Not all quadratic, quadratic equations have real number solutions. So for example, x squared equals negative 3 has no real number solutions because the square of any real number is never a negative number. Okay, so there's nothing that I could square that would get me a negative value at the end, right? It would always be positive. That's what it's saying. So to overcome this problem, mathematicians create an expanded system of numbers using the imaginary unit i, and that's defined as i equals the square root of negative 1. Now, if I were to square negative 1, square this, square root of negative 1, and I squared that, Notice that I would get a negative 1. So note that i squared equals just a negative 1. The imaginary unit i can be used to write the square root of any negative number. So if r is a positive real number, then square root of negative r equals i root r. So for example, if we have square root of negative 3, we can write that as negative 1 times square root of 3. That negative 1 just changes to an i, i root 3. By the first property, it follows that i square root of r squared is going to be negative r. So if we write this out, notice the square is on the outside. So that is that applies to the i and then square root of 3 squared. So remember, with the square root of 3 squared, that's going to make that go away i squared is going to be, remember what we set up here, negative 1. So negative 1 times 3, which is just a negative 3. So notice if you see something like this, it's just negative of whatever was inside. So let's find the square roots of numbers. We have a uh, times the square root of negative 25. So we can rewrite it, negative 1 uh, times square root of 25. So we know that the square root of negative 1, that's just i, and then the square root of 25 is 5. So how you write this is 5i. Now square root of negative 72, so we can do the negative 1 here, and this is 9 times 8, so let's simplify that more. Negative 1 times 3 times 3 times 8, which is 2 times 2 times 2. We circle our pairs, they go outside and get multiplied, so that's 3 times 2 and then this negative 1 becomes an i outside. And then square root of 2. So simplify it all the way. This is multiplying 3 times 2. So that is 6i square root of 2. Letter C. So negative 5 is on the outside. So we're focusing on negative 9 on the inside. So it's negative 1 times 3 times 3. So this comes out as a 3. And the negative 1 comes out as an i. So this is negative 5, is still there, times what comes out, the i, and then times 3. So let's simplify. You can multiply the numbers together. This becomes negative 15i. So try out these three here, 1, 2, and 3. If you can do it without breaking it down, that's fine. Um, so try this out. So for number 1, you should have gotten 2i, that's just square root of negative 1 times 2 times 2. Uh, negative 12, that's uh, negative 1 times 2 times 2 times 3. So therefore, you would get 2i root 3. For number 3, you get 2 times, uh, we have 9 times 6, and then there's a negative 1 in here as well, times negative 1. So I know I have 2i equals 3 times 3 times 3 times 2. So 3 is going to come out, 2 times 3i root 6, or 6i root 6. A complex number in standard, written in standard form, complex number, written in standard form is a number a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers. The number a is the real part, and the number bi is the imaginary part. So let's talk about some definitions. If b does not equal 0, then a plus bi is an imaginary number. If a equals 0, 
and B does not equal zero, then A plus BI, you're just left with ABI, is a pure imaginary number. So some real numbers are like negative one, pi is a real number, five thirds, and like square root of two. Those are all real numbers. Imaginary numbers are like two plus three I and nine minus five I. Pure imaginary, pure imaginary numbers are just the numbers with the I. So negative four I and six I, those are pure imaginary numbers. So the reason why we do that is because we're gonna try to solve equality of two complex numbers. So notice here. Two complex numbers a plus b i and c plus d i are equal if and only if a equals c, okay, so a equals c, and b equals d, okay, so b equals d. So find the values of x that satisfy the equation 2x minus 7i equals 10 plus y i. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the real parts equal to each other, and then we're going to set the imaginary parts equal to each other. So the real parts have no i with them. So real parts, uh, we have 2x and 10. So we're going to set those two equal to each other. 2x equals 10. And then we solve for x. So divide by 2. So we find out that x equals 5. Now let's do the imaginary parts. So that's going to be the negative 7i and the positive yi, so all the y's get set equal to each other. So this is going to be neg the i's, so negative 7i equals yi. Then we want to solve for y, so divide by the i value, and the i's cancel, so y equals negative 7. Okay, so try out number 5 and 6. You're just setting the real parts equal to each other and the imaginary parts equal to each other and then solving for the variables x and y. So we try this out, you're just solving for x and y. So for 5, you would get x equals 9, and then for the y, you would get, you would set 3i equals negative yi, divide by negative i by both sides, so you get y equals negative 3. For number 6, you set 9 and negative 2x equal to each other, divide by negative 2, so therefore x equals negative 9 halves. Then you set the y, the i's equal to each other, so 4yi equals positive 3i, and then we're going to, to isolate the y, we're going to divide 4i to both sides, so y equals 3 fourths.